Uh, Vikas sir. Hi, Ravinder sir. Sir, uh, it's nine fifty nine, and we'll start on time at ten. Fine. Okay, all fine, set. fine. Technically, all is set. Thank you. Should we start, Ravinder ji? Sure, sir. Okay. Hello. Good morning. Namaskar, everyone. Uh, myself, Vikas Kumar. Uh, on behalf of ARSD College, IQSC, and organizing team, welcome you on day three of three-day workshop on the digital turn in education in new patterns in teaching learning practices. For this session, we have with us Dr. K. P. Singh, Associate Professor, Library and Information Science. Sir, I welcome you. I also welcome our principal, sir. For us, he is a pillar, a strength, guiding force. His constant support, cooperation, encouragement always give us a hope and a strength to organizing such program regularly and frequently. Thank you, sir. Now, before we go to start our program, I'm just going to introduce our speaker, distinguished speaker. Dr. K.P. Singh is associate professor and associated with University of Delhi since 2001. And at present, he is an associate professor in Department of Library and Information Science, University of Delhi. He is MSc in Agriculture. He has also done Master of Library and Information Science in 1997. PGDCA in 2003, MPhil in Library and Information Science in 2004, along with PhD in 2007. He has a keen interest in ICT application in library and information activities, web designing and content development, library classification, theory and practical, internal and electronic resources, sources in science and technology, information storage and retrieval technology, information processing and organization information seeking behavior. Apart from this, sir has performed a very valuable role in some of the administrative assignment in Delhi University, as well as other institution of uh, India. Sir has also awarded Delhi Library Association some of the award like Library and Information Science Excellence Teaching Award 2017, Struggle Young Librarian Award gold medal award for securing first position in MSc in agriculture. Sir has also completed res major research projects. Apart from this, Sir has written a number of books, monograph, authored and edited, articles and research papers published in indexed and peer reviewed journals. Sir has also participated and presented paper, many national and international conferences, India and abroad. Sir is also associated with some renowned professional bodies, the University and also outside the University and abroad. Sir, I would like to invite you to deliver your talk on digital transformation and disruptive technology, changing landscape of education and learning. Sir, I welcome you, sir, for this program. Sir, my voice is audible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Audible, sir. Yeah. A very good morning to all. Uh, first of all, let me express my deep gratitude and thanks to Dasing and Dynamic and a very adorable teacher of ARSD. Now the principal, Dr. Gyantos Kumar Jhaji. Doc, Dr. V. K. Arora, IQAC coordinator, Dr. Vinita Tuli, workshop convener, and the most, I think, frequently connecting 
teacher in the ERST while interaction with me, uh, Dr. Baljeet Kaur, the organizer. And working behind the screen, who is taking the entire proceedings without hassle free, Mr. Vikas and other prominent team members of the ARST. It's indeed a great pleasure. <clears throat> once, <clears throat> once again, after the 5th June 2020, that I am speaking from the platform of uh, ARSD once again on a very pertinent three days topic that already explained by Mr. Vikas, the digital turn in education, new pattern in teaching and learning practices. My dear friends, and the many of the teachers research scholars, academicians from the different domain, connecting through online platform to this uh, very first uh, session of the last day. Before I start my talk, let me give my great uh, tribute, my deep condolences on my behalf and behalf of the entire participant in RSD College to the tribute and condolences to our great soldiers who sacrificed their supreme sacrifices by fighting the sovereignty of our country. And I also congratulate the entire team, especially the principal, Dr. Gyantos Kumar Jha, for listing the ARSD college in the list of best 15 in the NIRF country as a best college. For this, I congratulate the entire teaching fraternity, entire non-teaching, all uh, laboratory uh, uh, staff and laboratory assistant for doing their uh, wonderful jobs and making ARSD in the rank as a 13th best college of the country. So entire team is congratulated. Now I come to my points. My talk is, uh, if I share. Is it visual? Sir, uh, PPT? Huh? You, no, sir, it's not visible. PPT is not visual? No, sir. Now you see it? Mm -hmm. uh, I shall let. Yes. Visual? No, sir. No, it is not. Take, take minute. Please, please, please hold. Now visual? Yes, sir. Now it is visible. Just wait, I'm just... Uh... Okay. So uh, the today's talk is uh, uh, digital transformation and disruptive technology changing landscape of education and learning. My dear friends, I'm sure on the first day, my all time high regarded academician, Professor Dinesh Singhji, the former Vice Chancellor of Delhi University, in his inaugural address, certainly touch upon that what is this digital turn? There are the three technology or three terms which is in continuation, digital turn, digital transformation, and disruptive technology. So digital turn, you may be aware that, uh, that emphasize something more, the digital media that impact the whole life of learning, teaching, recording, and listening. 
So the digital turn is more emphasized on the digital media. And I would like to, in beginning, recommend one of the work on digital turn. I'm sure that most of the participants are aware about that work. Uh, please note down that work, and this is available in public domain, the digital turn, how the internet transform our existence by Wim West era. And this is include the 17 chapter, and there is one chapter, chapter seven, nine, educational battlefields. It describes everything entire that what the digital transformation, digital technology, digital trans taking place last two couple of decades. Uh, so the digital transformation and disruptive technology is continuation and how they are changing the entire landscape, education and research. So Mitro, I'm sure that the digital turn is basically digital turn just provided digital media, their impact on our lives. It explained the how the emerging flood of digital media affect our understanding of the world. It is compact guide to becoming media literate and to preparing us advanced digital service technology yet to come. So what is a digital transformation? Here digital, everything in digit, and that is digit in zero and one. And my dear friends, last two, in, last two, uh, two decades are a wilderness, especially the last one decade, 10 years back. The one term that is capital E is amplifier. The entire way of a contextual change, entire way of teaching, entire way of learning, entire way of business, I'm giving some example. Just, if you see, just E, E stand here for electronics. And now the learning drawn into e-learning. Libraries drawn into e-libraries. Bank drawn into e-banking. Commerce drawn into e-commerce. A ticket drawn into e-ticketing. Reservation, turn into e-reservation. Laboratory, going to convert the e-laboratory or virtual laboratories. And I am afraid that one day, maybe have the e-father, e-mother, e-brother. Don't know that what will be the future technology. So this, this is the conversion of the digital. So what is the digital transformation? Is the use of new, fast and frequently changing digital technology to solve problems. It is about transforming process, product and service that were non-digital or manual to digital process. So this digital transformation taking place and we are witnessing in every sectors, every field of knowledge, every service, and what is the digital disruptive technology? Naam se ya apko pata lag raha hoga ki aisi technology jo sab ko disrupt kar de, sab kuch khatam kar de. So before going the disruptive technology, if you see the left side, there are three types of innovations because the ideas give the birth of innovations, and innovation give the birth to the technology. And that when we talk about the technology or the innovation, they they talk the inventions and the inventions may be three one is sustaining and what is sustaining an innovation that does not significantly affect existing market it may be either do tarah ke hai. number one evolutionary and innovation that improve a product in an existing market in a way that customers are expecting a field injection say for gasoline injection which deplace the carburetors and the revolutionary, which is also called discontinuation radical, an innovation that is unexpected, what nevertheless does not affect existing market. The first automobiles in the late 19th century, which were expensive luxury items, 
and now very much. So this, the unexpected, and now you see the COVID is an unexpected, uh, unexpected, and it has changed the entire landscape of the learning and teaching, especially the education sectors, the entire teaching community, entire student, entire academic stakeholders are on online platform today. So here, if you see here, this is one is the when we talk about the innovation, one is the incremental innovation, which we call sustaining. Then the architectural innovation, which change the some architecture, but existence is no change. And the radical, as I have discussed, that is revolutionary, but the another technology, which is called disruptive. Disruptive means, if you see here, the disruptive. A disruptive technology is one that displays an existing technology and shake up the industry or groundbreaking product that create a completely new industry. And the concept was given by Clarkson Christens uh, in the 1997 uh, in the best selling book, The Innovator's Dilemma. And I have taken some of the uh, disruptive technology which has already been changed in the all the sphere of the life. Some of the examples of the disruptive technology and all we are aware. The left you see the personal computers display the typewriters and forever change the way we work and communi uh, communicate. Now there is no typewriter. The Windows operating systems, combination of affordability and user friendly interface was instrumental in the rapid development of personal computing industries in 1990s. Personal computing disrupted the television industry as well as a great number of other activities. The one again, a disruptive technology, email, transformed the way we communicating, largely displaying the latter writing and disrupting the postal and greeting card industries. I would like to emphasize here, my dear friends, the email has replaced the writing style of the letters. And you may be witness that uh, uh, the uh, Telefax, the Telegram, which was one of the best communication systems two years back, two, uh, 200 backs, but it was completely closed, even the, by Indian government. So this is the disruption. The cell phones made it possible to people to call us anywhere and disrupt the telecom industry. And here when the telecom came, it was really before coming the cell phone, you may be remember that there was one technology, the technology was called pager. And that pager is instant to receive the message, only the text message, and it gives that uh, somebody want to talk immediately. So koi immediately baat aap se karna chata hai, to wo kya karta tha, pager mein se wo number nikalta tha, aur baat karte tha. But people don't know about now the pagers. So this is a change. And there is also change. telephone lagna bahut pride ki baat hoti thi. Aur jab wo landline telephone hote the, usko replace kiya cordless phone ne. Fir usko replace kiya aapke cell phone ne. Aur cell phone ko now we are moving ahead. The laptop computers and mobile computing made a mobile workforce possible and made it possible for people to connect to corporate networks and collaborate from anywhere. In many organizations, laptop replace the desktops. Then the smartphones, this largely replace cell phones and PDAs. And because of the available apps, also disrupted pocket cameras, MP3 players, calculators, GPS 3D devices, among many other possibilities for some mobile users a smartphone often replace laptop and other prefer a tablet. So this is the disruption in the technology. And the one most important uh, disruption is the cloud computing. Has been a hugely disruptive technology in the business world. Displacing many resources that would conventionally have been located in house or provided at traditional hosted service. And the now new media and new technology, which is disrupted, that is social networking, has had a major impact on the way we communicate, and especially for the personal use. Has a disruptive telephone, email, instant messaging, and even planning. 
So these are some of the selected example of disruptive technology. So my dear friends, moving ahead, the significant disruptive technology, good or bad, but certainly change the landscape of education and learning. They are already enrolled in the education and learning, but they have a great influence in the coming days ahead. And I, this is the image you will find in the public domain. And I have taken that the uh, eight essential technologies which are breaking the boundaries of traditional learning educational systems. The first one, if you see here, Internet of Things. I will elaborate next. Internet of Things. You all are aware. Internet, just like not a, uh, a highways of the services, but it is a uh, things to put some very valuable services than augmented realities and virtual realities. Because this is the time that we are doing everything in faceless, cashless, matchless, and of course the vi uh, virusless services. So this is the uh, faceless teaching. Face is visual, but there is no physical contact. And the one technology is coming that will revolutionize the entire administration that is blockchain. And my dear friend, the artificial intelligence, I will discuss later on. The 3D printing, this revolutionize the, uh, or to disrupt the, the entire way of processing or manufacturing. The drones, yes, the drones is highly used uh, in case of the agriculture sector, the defense systems, even uh, in the corona, the drones are used mm -hmm. throughout the country, throughout the world in identifying uh, some of the uh, contingent areas and the robots are come. And I think they are the, they may be the replacement of the uh, uh, human beings because the robots are being used uh, not only the education, but majority in the hospitality sectors. So these are the important technology, which are disruptive technology. And what are the things of internet? Let me explain briefly. The internet of things is an expansive network of things or devices that are connected to internet, which facilitate their intercommunication IOT is another technology that will help to bridge the gap between the physical and digital spheres. There were 17 billion connecting devices in 2016, and it is a projection of 2020. It is span of where the 2200 plus billions, the ability to connect devices to the internet is nothing new, but we are now connecting more things to the internet than ever before. Imagine your alarm going off in the morning and promoting your coffee maker to start, brewing your morning cup before you self-drive car. Drivers for to one, a moral global scale. IoT will significantly transition us into smart cities. With the help of sensors, IoT will make our cities more efficient, cost-effective, and safer place in which to live. Smart buildings will turn utility off when closed down and turn everything back on as needed. I am giving here one example. Recently, five months back, I, I have a fortune to visit the KIT in Bhubaneswar. They have developed a multi-story library knowledge block. And this, the entire knowledge block, which is houses nine, story building has used the smart technology, sensor-based lighting, sensor-based AC, sensor-based uh, 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 computer on and off. They are used the IoT technology. And that smart street light will turn off when no one in the passing through. And a smart infrastructure will allow us to detect faults or deterioration in the city infrastructures or contamination in water. This is highly being used in the transmission system of the electricity. And then other technology which is coming in the education also, especially the gamification, that virtual or augmented reality. My dear friends, the virtual or the virtual reality or augmented reality is, has a huge market. And this is especially used in the entertainment industry. But these technology are becoming increasingly popular within the inter uh, entertainment industry. They are helping to blur the lines between physical and digital world. For the video game industry, significantly more interactive has ever. And if you see the change in digital, 
that uh, the, the, uh, the, the traditional cinema hall was uh, replaced by the PBR cinema, PBR. And now the PBR is going to be obsolete. The new technology which we have on the Netflix or, or this Amazon Flix, the people are like to watch and these are the new technology. And one technology which is coming, my dear friends in the education sector, that is collaboration platforms. The video presentations, forum, integrate education material from different sources in different formats. This makes learning easier and social. As a result, these platforms are fueling collaboration among higher education centers. Education and Innovation Consortium 2015 Higher Education Reports points to the trends that growing number of the institution collaborating in technology, the research and shared value. Yahan par bahut sare collaborating platforms. Dekhi, mein ek technology ke baare mein aapke yahan pe share karna chahta hu. Ki there was one time ke jab hum uh, 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 smart board aaye. Smart boards mein projector ke through hum content as a teacher bachchon ko dikha sakte the. But aaj kal ek smart systems aage hain. कि जिसमें आप स्मार्ट सिस्टम के साथ साथ जो भी आप उसमें लिखते हैं जो भी आप बोलते हैं ऑटोमेटिकली वो रिकॉर्डिंग हो रहा होता है और उस रिकॉर्डिंग और उस आप वीडियो को आप उस ऑडियो को डिफरेंट प्लेटफॉर्म पे इंटरनेट के थ्रू आप वर्चुअल इन्वायरमेंट में दूसरी क्लास में सेम टाइम पर आप ब्रॉडकास्ट कर सकते हैं सो दिस इज ए कोलाबोरेशन प्लेटफॉर्म एंड मेनी ऑफ द कोलाबोरेशन प्लेटफॉर्म गूगल हैज गिवन दिस कोलाबोरेशन प्लेटफॉर्म कि एक ही सॉफ्टवेयर पर एक ही फॉर्म में पांच छह रिसर्च स्कॉलर साइमल्टेनियसली काम कर सकते हैं एंड दिस इज द नीड ऑफ द आवर दिस इज द कोलाबोरेशन प्लेटफॉर्म दिस ब्लॉक चेन Certainly, this blockchain is an application or distributed ledger technology. Jitne bhi aajkal jo academic administration mein jo hamara management hai, chahe wo aapka staff ka management hai, salary management hai, aapka infrastructure management hai, inventory management hai, that is coming under the blockchains. And world storm over the last few years, it is set of disrupt most industry worldwide. Blockchain was developed through its first application. Bitcoin is a way to disrupt the banking industry in which ledgers are by de definition highly centralized in a given bank or a consortium of banks. Blockchain serves the purpose of establishing a trustless economy through its cryptographic and decentralized component and rendering the need of third party of traditional financial. And these are the blockchain three key features, decentralization and transparency and the security. And today is not the world is the uh, centralized. You may be the centralized processing, but the service must be the decentralized. So these three features aim to make financial transactions more secure while reducing fee charged by greedy banks. The goal was the facilitate faster transaction that are free from control and the risk of the single, single point of authority. So blockchain is coming. The next, who knows, all knows about the artificial intelligence. And my dear friends, that the artificial intelligence, uh, that this is the Jill Wilson. She is the artificial intelligence, but she is an assistant professor in Georgia Tech University, which is answerable and capable to answering all the questions. And you see the powers of this artificial uh, uh, robot, artificial intelligence based robot. We had one movie in, in case of the robot in India. And there was one time, I think two or three years back, if you remember, Sophia, there was the, the first human robot in the education. Uh, in the last two years back, program IIT Delhi and she was just like a uh, ordinary teachers. And the students, while she was interacting with the student and the student asking the questions and uh, immediately she was answering the question. So I think the robot is also coming uh, in the teachings uh, and I don't know that what will happen, but I will uh, discuss everything in the conclusion that in spite of our technology, there is no, they, uh, there is no uh, alternate, there is no replacement of the human technology or the human asset. So let's transform in teaching and learning. So one of the transformation is taking place, my dear friends, and that is all you are aware, the MOOC. Massive, open, 
online courses. So there are the two leaders in the in the leaders in the world, Addex. You may be heard the name Addex. This is a joint venture of Harvard and MIT, United States of America, which offers approximately three thousand courses in the field of language, communications, linguistic, engineering, technology, computer science, and the liberal science. And these are the cost effective, cost barrier. So the India is also uh, came in pictures, and you all know that MOOC are coming. So the India came with the nine uh, leaders uh, with having the uh, national coordinators, and I will discuss these all these things. If you see here, that is the one of the big platform, and that is a platform is the SWAM. SWAM platform. If you see here. The swim itself. What is stand the swim? A study web of active learning by aspiring minds. So this is already the aspiring minds. So the India through the swim platforms, which was launched in 2016, and uh, uh, with having the nine national coordinators for imparting the open access online education in the four segment. The first segment, if you see in the law, the school educations, and in the segment, the players are NIOS, National Institute of Open Schools, National Institute of Open Schools. Earlier it was called Open Schools, and the NCRT. They provide the schooling for uh, the ten plus two, nine plus ten, and ten plus twelve. And the out of the school education. They are the two institutions, two organizations leading in the country. The one which we call the IGNO, which is the People's University, and the NITTR. They provide the uh, out of school educations, ten plus two, and and nine plus two. Then there are certain undergraduate programs, and the four. Uh, uh, institution, academic institutions, uh, few are the accrediting bodies, have these programs. And what are those? The NIPTEL, National Program of Technical Enabled Learning. This was a very ambitious program by the uh, seven IITs and uh, IIC Bangalore. The NIPTEL for the engineering courses, the then AICT for engineering courses, and then CEC, Consortium for Educational. Uh, 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 resources, and that is for education and for management sciences, Indian Institute of Bangalore, and for PG program, you see the PG program, UGC, NIPTEL, IBM, and AICT. So these are the uh, 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 nine national coordinators which are responsible for providing the MOOC courses on the credit-based courses, and they have the uh, they have the three. Quad, uh, three main objective: access, equity, and quantity. Means education should be accessible to all. This should be equitable to all. And if anybody want to increase his or her qualification, there should not be any uh, barriers. So these provide such kind of options. So. Now let's again. I am going to uh, take some of the uh, disruptive technologies in education and learning, and very interesting. I will discuss here, and I will try to touch upon some of the uh, uh, traditional technologies which has been disrupted by the new technologies. Because new the technology, uh, when it brings the technology, it also brings its culture. Pure culture ko change kar deti hai. Now see the digital technology has changed the entire. culture of the thinking entire culture of working entire culture of writing entire culture of uh, uh, revision writing editing everything so they have changed the cultural change also so if you see here from left to right here if you see here this is one of the very prominent and bahut bahut hamari jo shiksha paddhati jisko hum kehte the gurukul गुरु के आश्रम में पढ़ना दैट इज कॉल्ड 
गुरुकुल तो गुरुकुल में ओपन एनवायरमेंट में स्टडी होती थी नेचर के साथ स्टडी होती थी और वहां पर दोनों थ्योरी एंड प्रैक्टिस एक साथ चलते थे क्योंकि वहां पर शास्त्र ज्ञान और शास्त्र ज्ञान दोनों कराया जाता था और कहते हैं कि जो गुरुकुल की शिक्षा थी वो एक सर्वप्रिय शिक्षा थी और मैं इसको मानता हूं क्योंकि मुझे भी कुछ ना कुछ गुरुकुल का अनुभव है क्योंकि वहां आज की डेट में क्या है शास्त्र मतलब कि शास्त्रों का तो ज्ञान है लेकिन शस्त्रों का ज्ञान नहीं है तो जो गुरुकुल हमारी शिक्षा पद्धति थी नाउ इट इज गोइंग टू कन्वर्ट द स्कूल एजुकेशन जहां पर कि एक वेल स्ट्रक्चर फॉर्मल वे में बिल्डिंग्स होती हैं, टीचिंग क्लास होती हैं, टीचिंग एड्स होते हैं टीचर पढ़ा रही होती हैं, बच्चे बैठ रहे होते हैं मुझे पता है और मुझे ये गर्व भी है कि आज की डेट में जब हम कॉलेज में जाते हैं क्लासरूम्स में जाते हैं तो हम देखते हैं कि बहुत बढ़िया फर्नीचर वहां पर होता है बट आई स्टिल रिमेम्बर माई डेज वेन आई वॉज इन स्कूल डेज इन दरियाणा मित्रों मुझे ये कहने में फक्र होता है कि जब हम गांव से स्कूल जाते थे मेरे गांव से मेरा स्कूल पांच किलोमीटर दूरी पर था तो हम जो एक टाट होता है जो बोरी के बने हुए जिसमें कि गेहूं की भराई होती है उसको हम साथ लेके जाते थे और वहां पे ना कोई मैट होते थे ना कोई उस समय फर्नीचर होता था हम सिर्फ अपना वो साथ लेके जाते थे और उसको बिठा मतलब बिछाते थे और उसी पर बैठते थे हमने वो शिक्षा देखी है लेकिन उसमें संतोष बहुत था Now this education system going to replace the projector base. स्मार्ट क्लास है प्रोजेक्टर लगे हुए हैं बच्चे पढ़ रहे हैं टीचर पढ़ा रहे हैं एंड नाउ दिस प्रोजेक्टर बेस टीचिंग इज गोइंग टू बी रिप्लेस और डिसरप्टेड बाई जो मैं आज आपके साथ इंट्रैक्ट कर रहा हूँ दैट इज कॉल द इंट्रक्शन थ्रू द वर्चुअल इन्वायरमेंट जो भी हमारे वर्चुअल प्लेटफॉर्म है उस पर हम टॉक कर रहे हैं हम सिर्फ फेस से देख रहे हैं आप मेरी बातों को सुन पा रहे हैं आप मेरे फेस को सुन पा रहे हैं लेकिन मेरे एक्सप्रेशन मेरे फीलिंग्स को नहीं देख पा रहे हैं वो ब्यूटी नहीं आ पा रही है जो वो क्लास में होते हैं और जो बच्चा जो मतलब टीचर को पता होता है कि मेरे बच्चे ने क्या सीखा है क्योंकि टीचिंग इज नॉट ए प्रोफेशन बट ए पैशन और आपको रिजल्ट आपकी टीचिंग का तुरंत आपकी क्लास में मिल जाता है और जब आप क्लास से निकलते हैं और जब बच्चे आपके साथ निकलते हैं और कहते हैं सर आज की क्लास बहुत अच्छी थी दैट इज अ ग्रेट सेटिस्फैक्शन एंड दैट सेटिस्फैक्शन यू कैन नॉट फील सच काइंड ऑफ सिस्टम्स जो जहां मैं आज आपसे बात कर रहा हूं मींस वर्चुअल प्लेटफॉर्म में तो दिस इज वन ऑफ द साइकिल दिस इज वन ऑफ द साइकिल ऑफ द एजुकेशन ट्रांसफॉर्मिंग और डिसरप्टिंग द वन सिस्टम टू अदर देन मेरे मित्रो रीडिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट देखिए कि जो हमारी कॉग्नेटिव एक्सप्रेशन कॉग्नेटिव एबिलिटीज को हमने जो उसको इम्बॉडिड किया तो हमारी जो रीडिंग हैबिट थी सबसे पहले जब आप वेदास देखेंगे तो वो पपायरस पे स्टोन पे उन पे लिखे होते थे हम वन टू वन पढ़ते थे उसके बाद जब बुक्स में हम पढ़ते हैं और देर इज नो रिप्लेसमेंट ऑफ बुक्स बट नाउ द बुक्स इज गोइंग टू बी एनोदर अवतार दैट इज कॉल किंडल डिजिटल बुक्स तो किंडल इज कमिंग बैक एंड आज की डेट में तो कहते हैं कि डिजिटली बोर्न डॉक्यूमेंट दैट इज कॉल्ड एजॉइल टेक्नोलॉजीज कि जो डिजिटली बोर्न है क्योंकि आजकल सारी टेक्नोलॉजी को जो कंटेंट आ रहा है वो डिजिटली है फिर हम उसको प्रिंट में कन्वर्ट कर रहे हैं तो दिस इज वन जनरेशन द रीडिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट बट माई डियर फ्रेंड्स मे बी यू मे बी अग्री कि जो पढ़ने का एक जो आनंद जो अनुभूति हमें टक से मिलती है जब हम उन वर्ड्स में जंबल करते हैं बबलिंग करते हैं वो इलेक्ट्रॉनिक गैजेट्स में नहीं मिलती है मेरा अपना मानना है हो सकता है कि आज की जनरेशन का दूसरा रूप हो सो दिस रीडिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट एंड सी द राइटिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट इज गोइंग टू बी डिस्ट्रॉप्टेड आपको याद होगा हो सकता है कि बहुत सारे जो यंगर जनरेशन के यहाँ पर टीचर्स होंगे या फिर रिसर्च स्कॉलर्स होंगे उन्होंने सिलेट का नाम नहीं सुना होगा सिलेट से पहले मैं आपको बता दूं कि जब हम स्कूल जाते थे हो सकता है कि आप में से मेरी एज के कुछ हों कि सिलेट से पहले लकड़ी की तख्ती होती थी हम लोग उस तख्ती पे लिखते थे और इतना खूबसूरत लिखते थे इनको सही से और लिखने के बाद 
में सेकेंड हाफ में उसके मार्क्स होते थे जो सबसे सुंदर लिखेगा उसको और तो हम बड़ी खुशी खुशी उस पर जो पहाड़े लिखे होते थे जो टेबल जो आज हम बोलते हैं अगर बच्चों को बोले कि दो का पहाड़ा सुनाओ तो टू वन जो टू 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 जो वो फोर और सिक्स पे करेगा लेकिन दो तीन या छह नहीं बोल पाएगा वो तो हम तख्ती से स्टार्ट होकर के स्लेट पर आए और स्लेट को रिप्लेस किया इलेक्ट्रॉनिक स्लेट ने बीच में हम गेमिंग देखते थे कि बच्चों को जब छोटे बच्चे होते थे इलेक्ट्रॉनिक स्लेट देते थे तो वो लिखता था ऑटोमेटिकली डिलीट हो जाता था देन वी केम द नोटबुक एंड द नोटबुक नाउ वी आर कमिंग टू द कंप्यूटर्स दैट एवरीथिंग वी आर राइटिंग एंड वी आर एवरीथिंग राइटिंग ऑन द कंप्यूटर्स एंड नाउ द कंप्यूटर्स द टाइप राइटर इज गोइंग टू बी रिप्लेस्ड द फिंगरप्रिंट इज आल्सो नाउ द वीसीआर वॉइस करेक्टर रिकॉग्निशन जस्ट आप बोलते रहिए और वो आपको टाइप करता रहेगा तो इसने आपके जितने भी शॉर्ट हैंड थे टाइप राइटर थे सबको एक क्वेश्चन मार्क खड़ा कर दिया है सो राइटिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट गोइंग टू बी रिप्लेस एंड टीचिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट सी द टीचिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट एक समय होता था कि वाह ब्लैक बोर्ड कहते हैं कि वो टीचर ही क्या कि जो पढ़ाते समय जिसके कपड़े पर उसके लिखे हुए परिश्रम का जो चौक उसके कपड़ों पर ना आए उसके हाथ उस चौक से ना गए तो आया कि जी चौक से तो प्रॉब्लम्स होती हैं हाथ में इन्फेक्शन होता है ओके जी जो ब्लैक बोर्ड और चौक रिप्लेस बाय सेरेमिक बोर्ड मार्कर आ गए उसे लिखना शुरू कर दिए देन दिस बार रिप्लेस बाय प्रोजेक्टर्स प्रोजेक्टर्स आ गए एंड नाउ द प्रोजेक्टर्स आर गोइंग टू मतलब रिप्लेस बाय द लाइव वीडियो लेक्चर सो दीज आर दी और जो भी मित्रों आज आप ये टेक्नोलॉजी देख रहे हैं हार्डवेयर जो टेक्नोलॉजी देख रहे हैं ये आने वाले दस पांच साल में हार्डवेयर टेक्नोलॉजी नहीं होगी सारी टेक्नोलॉजी वर्चुअल फॉर्म में होगी क्योंकि आज की डेट में जो कंप्यूटर का जो फॉर्म आने वाला है जिसे हम कहते हैं क्वांटम कंप्यूटिंग और क्वांटम कंप्यूटर कंप्यूटर साइंस के टीचर्स बहुत अच्छे से बता पाएंगे बट आई लिटिल हैड नॉलेज द क्वांटम कंप्यूटर इट विल चेंज दर रेवल्यूशन ऑफ द एलगोरिदम एंड कैलकुलेशन देन वी आर कमिंग टू द वर्चुअल लर्निंग There was one time that he is giving the offline classes. Offline classes means just uh, the standing and the lecture is recording and uh, and displaying. That is is going the offline classes are going to the online classes. जो कि आज कोरोना ने हमें फोर्स कर दिया कि आपको ऑनलाइन क्लास लेनी है. And now is going to be examinations. Traditional mode of medium. जहाँ पे बच्चे one to one बैठते थे और आज वो क्या है digital medium में जा रहे हैं. बहुत सारी जो नेशनल लेवल की एग्जामिनेशन चाहे वो नीट की है चाहे आपकी जे डब्ल की है बाकी बैंकिंग सेक्टर्स की है दे आर ऑलरेडी डिजिटाइज दे आर ऑलरेडी इन डिजिटल मीडियम सो आपको डिजिटल मीडियम में है बट नाउ कोरोना हैज फोर्स टू कंडक्ट द एग्जामिनेशन डिजिटल मोड लेट अस सी कि क्या होता है सो द एग्जामिनेशन पैटर्न इज गोइंग टू बी ऑन दिवेलुएशन पैटर्न इज गोइंग टू बी ऑन मैं आपको एक एक्सपीरियंस शेयर करता हूँ कि मेरे पास किसी यूनिवर्सिटी की कॉपी आई वो ऑनलाइन मेरे मेल पे आई कहा कि आप ऑनलाइन चेक करिए तो मैंने ऑनलाइन चेक करी तो ये एक मीडियम चेंज हो रहे हैं देन ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन स्टोरेज मीडिया वाह जैसा कि मैंने कहा डिजिटल ट्रॉन जो डिजिटल ट्रॉन है इंफोसाइज द मोर ऑन द डिजिटल स्टोरेज मीडिया द मीडिया मीडिया बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है देखिए नाइनटीन सिक्सटी के आसपास जो स्टोरेज मीडिया होता था इलेक्ट्रॉनिक फॉर्म में पंच कार्ड होता था रिप्लेस बाय पंच टेप पंच टेप रिप्लेस बाय सिलेक्शन टेप सिलेक्शन टेप रिप्लेस बाय मैग्नेटिक टेप एंड मैग्नेटिक टेप बाय रिप्लेस बाय कॉम्पैक्ट कैसेट एंड द मैग्नेटिक ड्रम देन मैग्नेटिक ड्रम रिप्लेस बाय फ्लॉपी और जब फ्लॉफी आई मुझे याद है आज से 20 साल पहले कि फ्लॉफी हैज रेवोल्यूशनाइज्ड द एंटायर स्टोरेज और लोग बड़ा फील प्राउड करते थे कि मेरा जो सीवी है मेरा जो डेटा है फ्लॉपी में तो फ्लॉपी इज रिप्लेस बाय हार्ड डिस्क एंड हार्ड डिस्क रिप्लेस बाय लेजर डिस्क एंड दीज आर रिप्लेस बाय कंपैक्ट डिस्क एंड द डीवीडी फ्लैश ड्राइव ब्लू रे इकोली एंड नाउ देयर इज गोइंग टू बी एंटायर चेंज इन द स्टोरेज डिवाइस दैट द सेंट बेस्ड स्टोरेज सो दिस इज अ रेवोल्यूशन नॉट रेवोल्यूशन बट दिस इज अ डिसरप्शन इन द स्टोरेज मीडिया And don't know क्या होगा कि वैसे सबसे बड़ा तो स्टोरेज हमारा माइंड है बायोलॉजिकल इंफॉर्मेशन सो दिस इज दिसरप्शन स्टोरेज मीडिया नाउ 
uh, digital transformation in libraries yes of course uh, uh, just a little bit i will just only one minute because there is also going the transformation in digital libraries that there was print catalog to opac opac to the web opac and web opac to the mobile opac ki aaj aap kisi bhi library ka aap jo database hai jo library resources hai aap mobile pe aap access kar sakte ho uh, the information retrieval to ms excel then barcode RFID आ गया है। जैसे आप किताब लाइब्रेरी के अंदर इंटर करेंगे तो अगर आप अनऑथराइज कोई बुक आपके गलती से लेके जा रहे हैं तो वो बिप करेगा दैट इज कॉल्ड रेडियो फ्रीक्वेंसी आइडेंटिफिकेशन आ गया है देन कम्युनिकेशन पोस्ट बॉक्स से इनबॉक्स में आ गए और इनबॉक्स से ऑटो बॉक्स में आ गए सो एंड दिस ऑफलाइन सर्विस जितनी भी थी चाहे वो बुक्स की थी डॉक्यूमेंट डिलीवरी सर्विस थी बुक्स इज कन्वर्टेड टू ई बुक्स एंड ई बुक्स इज कन्वर्टेड इन द मोबाइल बुक्स एंड वर्चुअल रियलिटी बुक्स and perpetual access idea so this is the revolution is all the library sectors also now i come to the conclusion because uh, 11 o'clock i have to finish this conclusion i have drawn my dear friends by reading some of the facts and with my own experience and it has the pro and cons advantage or disadvantage of both the educational systems हमें आज नहीं तो कल इनको एडॉप्ट करना ही पड़ेगा क्योंकि चार्ल्स डार्विन ने कहा था कि अगर आपको सरवाइव करना है तो आपको अपने आप में चेंज करना ही होगा परिवर्तन लाना ही होगा और आप चेंज नहीं कर पाएंगे अपने आप को परिवर्तित नहीं कर पाओगे अपने आप को एडॉप्ट नहीं कर पाओगे चार्ल्स डार्विन ने भी ये भी कहा था कि ये मैटर नहीं करता कि कौन कितना शक्तिशाली है कौन कितना बलशाली है कि वो सरवाइव करेगा सरवाइव वो करेगा जो समय के हिसाब से अपने आप को जो रेस्पॉन्स टू चेंज जो चेंज कर लेगा और चेंज करने में यही है या तो आप अपने शक्तिशाली हो कि अपने आप को कि जो चेंज आ रहा है उसको आप चेंज कर दें या अगर आप चेंज नहीं कर सकते हैं तो उस चेंज को एडॉप्ट कर लें आपको एडॉप्ट करना ही पड़ेगा सो द डिजिटल ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इन एजुकेशन इज ए ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी नेसेसिटी राइट फ्रॉम स्कूलिंग टू हायर एजुकेशन एवरी लेवल ऑफ अवर लर्निंग सिस्टम इज अफेक्टेड बाई टेक्नोलॉजी रैपिड इवॉल्विंग टेक्नोलॉजी इज ट्रांसफॉर्मिंग द वे knowledge is imparted and absorbed today increasing digitization is making way for new communication instruments enabling faster knowledge sharing in schools and colleges it is redefining learning models in education and skill development digital transformation of our education system will require commitment from all stakeholders there is a growing need to integrate the smart use of digital technologies to enhance the teaching learning experience new technologies in education such as cloud computing moocs smart boards and others are already impart imp, uh, are already impacting the teaching learning process in a big way this is the second side of my conclusion my dear students my dear friends my dear research scholars teaching is not about technology however technology is simply a powerful tool the real question is how you use the technology as an effective engagement and pedagogical tool to be truly effective teachers will need to be more nimble in adjusting to the learning needs of the students with diverse backgrounds and level of achievement they must be able to implement curriculum by personalizing learning strategies to meet individual students need to a millennium teacher will have to continually on the lock out for individuals and organizations that can reinforce the long term value of what is being taught in the classrooms a active relationship with the bro uh, broad community will be the hallmarks of the success of millennium teachers means the modern teacher 
engagement, being a role model and a mentor, bridging, bringing learning to life, carrying out students, being passionate about subject matter and teaching. These quality of a good teacher are timeless and will not change. So the container will change. Content never will change. The form and format of the will change, but the thought content will never change. We, we have to adopt the change because I am not against the technology. I am a very technology savvy. Technology is only a tool. It is only a assisted technology making us smart. But somehow it is also making us as a handicap. हमें अपने systems पे भरोसा होना चाहिए और सबसे बड़ा system है हमारा अपना अपना intellectual system. आज सब कुछ हम मशीन पे निर्भर हो गए हैं. Physical boundaries कोई matter नहीं है. लेकिन personal contact, personal emotions matter हैं. Technology ने हमें बहुत close ला दिया है. लेकिन दिलों से उतना दूर कर दिया है टेक्नोलॉजी के एडवांटेज डिसएडवांटेज फेजेस में आते रहेंगे चलते रहेंगे लेकिन एक बेस्ट टीचर के लिए अपने स्टूडेंट के साथ कंटेंट के साथ वो कनेक्शन उसको अपडेट करना उसको मोटिवेट करना उसको इंस्पायर करना उसको एक अच्छा सिटीजन बनाने के साथ साथ उसको एक अच्छा कैरियर के लिए मोटिवेट करना ये शिक्षक की सबसे बड़ी जिम्मेवारी है और जिम्मेवारी रही है जब एक शिक्षक हमारे पुराने कहावों में देखिए चंद्रगुप्त को किसने बनाया और कहते हैं कि जब आप प्रैक्टिकल मोड में जाएंगे कहते हैं कि रामानुजम वॉज ए ग्रेट टीचर बट एसेंशियली ही वॉज बिकम ए ग्रेट टीचर वेन ही वॉज इन वेन वी वॉज एक्सप्लोर बाई द लंडन स्कॉलर्स आर्डिंग सो इन्हीं सब बातों के साथ में मैं आपके साथ अपनी बात खत्म करता हूं इस उम्मीद पर कि अवश्य ही जो आज एक डिजिटल ट्रॉन है डिजिटल ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन है और उसमें जो डिसरप्शन आ गया है टेक्नोलॉजी के माध्यम से वो कहीं ना कहीं आपके रिसर्च वर्क में आपके टीचिंग वर्क में आपके एकेडमिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन में आपके जीवन में कहीं ना कहीं वो किसी ना किसी अंशों में वो जरूर फायदेमंद होगा जरूर उसके कुछ कुछ आप सेमिनल चेंज आएंगे और ऑलवेज रिमेम्बर टेक्नोलॉजी आती है टेक्नोलॉजी जाती है और टेक्नोलॉजी का मतलब होता है जो टिकाऊ ना हो वही टेक्नोलॉजी है इसलिए वो डिस्टरप्टिव है इसलिए तकनीक पर विश्वास करो तकनीक में से टेक्नोलॉजी निकलती है टेक्नोलॉजी तो आती रहती है जाती रहती है और एक अच्छे शिक्षक के लिए सबसे बड़ा जो उसका कर्तव्य है सबसे बड़ा जो उसका है उसके स्टूडेंट के साथ उसका कंटेंट के थ्रू कनेक्शन और अपने इंस्टीट्यूशन के प्रति उसका समर्पण थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच और मुझे उम्मीद है कि आपको कुछ ना कुछ जरूर इसमें से यूजफुल लगा होगा और मैं अपनी वाणी को विराम देता हूँ और आप सभी के लिए बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद कि एक घंटा आपने मेरी बातों का बड़ा ध्यान से सुना अब मुझे नहीं पता कि मेरी कहीं टेक्नोलॉजी में डिस्ट्रप्शन तो नहीं था कि मेरी बात बीच में आपको सुनाई भी दी या नहीं भी सुनाई दी बस मैं तो एक डीप मतलब एक अंधेरे कुएं की तरह बैठा हूं और बोले जा रहा हूं आई थिंक वो फीलिंग नहीं आई मित्रों जो क्लास में आती है जो हजार मतलब 500 बच्चों के साथ में 100 बच्चों के साथ में क्लास रूम में बैठते हैं वो जो आती है वो फीलिंग आई थिंक मुझे महसूस नहीं होती मैंने इतने लेक्चर दिए इतने वेबिनार दिए लेकिन क्योंकि ये टाइम की डिमांड है समय का मतलब नीड है हमें समय के साथ चलना होगा और कोरोना ने हमें ये सब कुछ करने के लिए मजबूर कर दिया अब कोरोना एक नेगेटिव फेज है उसमें से नेगेटिव में से नेगेटिव मत ढूंढिए कुछ पॉजिटिव ढूंढिए और जीवन में आगे बढ़िए धन्यवाद थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर फॉर दिस इलेटिव एक्सलेंट इम्पोर्टेंट लेक्चर यू हैव वेरी ब्यूटिफुल यू हैव एनालाइज डिजिटल टेक्नोलॉजी सर 
you have also made very beautiful presentation that how our entire education system and technology changed in last few decades how all the technological development some of the technological development how disrupted our education system and how they have made changes in our education system positively and negatively both so thank you very much sir thank you very much sir sir we have some question Jee. sir kuch question hai kuch sawal hai baat so, boliye uh, hum chahte hain sir usko agar le le sir uh, acha lagega ji okay. sir ek question hai uh, dr sharma ji ka uh, sir please explain more on black blockchain acha <coughs> शर्मा जी आपने बहुत अच्छा प्रश्न किया है एक्चुअली जो ब्लॉकचेन है एक तरह की एक टेक्नोलॉजी है जिसमें ऑटोमेटिकली कोलाबोरेटिव प्लेटफॉर्म पे जो आप इन्वेंट्री मैनेजमेंट करते हैं स्पेशली जो फाइनेंस मैनेजमेंट करते हैं जहां इन्वेंट्री का इशू रिटर्न उसका चेकिंग उसका बैलेंसिंग uh, उसका किसी को देना है कितनी मात्रा में देना है ऑटोमेटिकली उसका करेक्शन होना ऑटोमेटिकली आ जाना कंपोनेंट आ जाना तो उसकी एक पब्लिक प्लेटफॉर्म पर एक ये ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी है और आने वाले समय में ये डेटा बेस मैनेजमेंट करने की एक अप्रोप्रिएट टेक्नोलॉजी है जो कि पब्लिक प्लेटफॉर्म पे है और ये कोलोबरेटिव इन नेचर है और सबसे बड़ी इसकी इंपॉर्टेंट है कि सिक्योरिटी ट्रांसपेरेंसी एंड एक्सेसिबिलिटी दिस इज अ हाईली मतलब कि इंपॉर्टेंट सिग्निफिकेंट टेक्नोलॉजी कमिंग इन द फील्ड ऑफ बिजनेस कमिंग इन द फील्ड दैट कैन बी एप्लीकेबल इन बिजनेस स्पेशल इन बैंकिंग सेक्टर्स द इन्वेंटरी मैनेजमेंट जी थैंक यू सर सर दिस वन मोर क्वेश्चन जी शी इज आवर कलीग Uh, anupriya arora from commerce department and uh, she just asked sir i wish to know how this transformation will be useful for disabled people or divyang people sir okay bahut acha prashn kiya hai ah dekhiye kyunki jo divyang jan hai jinko main vip bolta hu visually impaired people वो हमारे बड़े स्पेशल कैटेगरी के हम में से ही एक है उनके लिए तो जो डिजिटल टेक्नोलॉजी ने उनके लिए बूम है अभी आप देखिए कि अगर कोई स्टूडेंट या रिसर्चर या कोई टीचर वो देख नहीं पाते हैं वो सुन नहीं पाते हैं तो जो लुइस ब्रेल थे उनके पास सिर्फ ओनली ब्रेल लाइब्रेरी का कॉन्सेप्ट था कि वो सिर्फ उनको मार करके उनको रीड कर सकते थे बट आज की डेट में बहुत सारी एक आपने जोए का नाम सुना होगा पर्टिकुलर टेक्नोलॉजी बहुत सारी टेक्नोलॉजी हैं जो स्पेशली वीआईपी और डिसेबल्ड पीपल स्पेशली दी हियरिंग इम्पेयर दी ब्लाइंड पीपल्स के लिए डेवलप हुई हैं कि अगर आपका जो टेक्नोलॉजी के माध्यम से कोई भी लेक्चर रिकॉर्ड कर लिया उसको वो सुन सकते हैं पहले सुनने की सुविधाएं नहीं होती थी अगर कोई है कि वो सुन नहीं सकता लेकिन देख सकता है तो उनके लिए विजुअल टेक्नोलॉजी सबसे बड़ी इंपॉर्टेंट है और इसमें जो सबसे बड़ा जो रोल आने वाला है जो वर्चुअल रियलिटी और एगोमेंटेड रियलिटी जिसको कि हम बोलते हैं गेमिफिकेशन का बहुत बड़ा रोल इस टेक्नोलॉजी जो हमारे डिसेबल्ड है एबल्ड पीपल है उनके लिए बहुत यूजफुल है जी सर अब एक क्वेश्चन भी है और उनका मतलब एक जिज्ञासा भी है एक तरीके से सचिन कुमार हैं जी उन्होंने लिखा है सर मैंने भी तख्ती और अपनी टाट की बोरी का इस्तेमाल किया है जी पर ये सब आज संभव नहीं है जी हालांकि मेरा ये मानना है कि उन चीजों ने हमें जो सिखाया है वो आज संभव नहीं है आप क्या समझते हैं इसके बारे में देखिए ये सुझाव नहीं है उनकी फीलिंग है जी जी क्योंकि वो उस दौर से गुजरे हैं जिस दौर से मैं गुजरा हूं जो चीज मैंने शेयर की है क्योंकि आज की डेट में जब हम बहुत हाई प्रोफाइल पे पहुंच जाते हैं तो अपने अतीत को भूल जाते हैं अपनी संस्कृति को भूल जाते हैं अपने संस्कारों को भूल जाते हैं 
मैंने कहा कि हर देखिए जो टेक्नोलॉजी है ये टिकाऊ नहीं है मैं आज कह रहा हूं आपको खुल के कह रहा हूं आज आप देखिए सबसे पहले अगर कोई ऑप्सलीट होने वाला है तो टेक्नोलॉजी ऑप्सलीट होती है और वो डिस्टर्ब कर देती है जो उस समय की लर्निंग का जो एक भाव था कहते हैं कि ना तो उस समय के शिक्षक हमारे बीच में है ना उस समय के शिक्षार्थी हमारे बीच में है तो मैं इस पे मतलब अपनी भावनाएं व्यक्त कर सकता हूं और वो भी उनकी भावनाएं भी वही हैं कि उसका कोई रिप्लेसमेंट नहीं है उसका कोई आ, मतलब कोई अल्टरनेट नहीं है ये टेक्नोलॉजी ने मैं इसके अगेंस्ट में नहीं हूं ये हमारे सिर्फ मतलब हेल्पिंग हैंड्स हैं बट सम हाउ हमें बहुत दूर भी कर दिया है सम हाउ देखिए जब शिक्षा में से सम्मान सद्भाव और सत्कार और संस्कार निकल जाएंगे तो वो वो शिक्षा बाजरी बाजरीकरण हो जाएगी मार्केटिंग हो जाएगी और उसमें वो भाव नहीं आ पाएगा पहले जो शिक्षाएं थी उसमें ये भाव जुड़े होते थे मैं ये नहीं कह रहा हूँ आज भाव नहीं जुड़े हुए आज भी बहुत सारे शिक्षक हैं आज भी बहुत सारे स्टूडेंट हैं जो एक दूसरे को अपना वो कनेक्ट करते और मानते हैं लेकिन उसका रिप्लेसमेंट नहीं है क्योंकि जो लिखने का मजा तख्ती पे आता था जो हम कलम स्याही उससे लिखते थे व्हाइट कलर का होता था लिखते थे सुंदर सुंदर और घर लेके आते थे उसको रिसाइड करते थे वो एक अलग तरह का मजा था पर आज की टेक्नोलॉजी है आज की ये देन है तो इसमें भी हमें जीना पड़ेगा और क्या पता कि कल को कौन सी टेक्नोलॉजी हो जो है उसी के साथ हमें उसके साथ एडजस्ट और एडेप्ट करके हमें जीना पड़ेगा थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सर सर डॉक्टर मनीषा है इनका सवाल है सर हाउ टू मेक ऑफ दिस चेंजिंग फेज ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी Useful for research by scholars. देखिए मनीषा जी सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट तो ये कि रिसर्च आज के डेट में इतनी ईजियर हो गई है पहले जो रिसर्च होती थी एक्चुअल में रिसर्च का मतलब सर्च देन सर्च देन सर्च लिटरेचर रिव्यू जब हम किसी भी रिसर्च का करते हैं तो पहले प्रिंटेड सोर्स से करते थे इंडेक्सिंग एबसेक्टिव हम कंसल्ट करते थे प्रिंटेड जर्नल्स कंसल्ट करते थे आज की डेट में तो रिसर्चर्स जस्ट वो ऑनलाइन चाहे या अपनी यूनिवर्सिटी की वेबसाइट पे जाए कॉलेज में जाए जो उसके डेटाबेस है उसको सर्च करता है और एक ही मतलब की सर्च उस पे कमांड पर उसको हजारों एब्सट्रैक्ट हजारों रिसर्च उसके डेस्कटॉप पे आ जाती है तो उसको वो अपना रिसर्च बिकम ए हाईली इजियर देन एवर और दूसरा कि उसके साथ साथ आपको फुल टेक्स अवेलेबल है पहले तो एक एक आर्टिकल अगर आपको पसंद आया और वो आपको नहीं है लाइब्रेरी में तो मंगाने में इंटर लाइब्रेरी लोन में मंगवाते थे वेट करते थे लेकिन आज ऐसा कुछ नहीं है और दूसरी बात आपके रिसर्च के टूल्स इतने ज्यादा आ गए हैं मैं एक एग्जांपल देता हूं एसपीएसएस सॉफ्टवेयर है एसपीएसएस सॉफ्टवेयर में जैसा आप डेटा इनपुट कर दीजिए सारी की सारी रिपोर्ट जनरेशन जिस तरह से आप चाहते हैं ऑटोमेटिकली कंप्यूटर सिस्टम आपको करके दे देगा पहले सारी मैनुअल करनी पड़ती थी और एक एग्जाम्पल दे रहा हूं मैं आपको आजकल गूगल फॉर्म से बहुत लोग रिसर्च करना शुरू कर दिए थे गूगल में डॉक में फॉर्म डेवलप किया और ऑनलाइन भेज दिया उसमें 20-25 क्वेश्चन किए और मैंने उसको एक्सपेरिमेंट किया मैंने एक प्रोग्राम किया था तो वहां पे गूगल के अंदर इतनी फीचर्स हैं कि जैसे ही वो डेटा आता है ना डेटा ऑटोमेटिकली गूगल उसको इंटरप्रेट कर देता है उसके ऑटोमेटिकली चार्ट बना देगा डायग्राम बना देगा जैसा आपने उसको लेख लिखना है अब आप देखिए कि टेक्नोलॉजी ने आपकी जो रिसर्च को कितना सुगम बना दिया है लेकिन हाँ टेक्नोलॉजी ने आपके लिए मुश्किलें भी खड़ी कर दी हैं और वो मुश्किलें क्या है इंटेलेक्चुअल आपके जो एकेडमिक इंटीग्रिटी प्लेजरिज्म आपको इन सब चीजों में ध्यान देना है कि टेक्नोलॉजी ने तो रिसर्च को बहुत साफ बना दिया आज आपने रिसर्च किया पूरे वर्ल्ड में आज आपकी रिसर्च अवेलेबल होगी लोगों के लिए आप पब्लिश कर दीजिए पहला टाइम होता था कि रिसर्च आपकी पब्लिश करने के लिए कॉन्फ्रेंस में जाना पड़ता था मुझे आज भी याद है कि ग्रेगर जोन मैंडल जो कि जेनेटिक्स के फादर कहे जाते हैं कि उन्होंने जब थ्री लॉज का नेचर ऑफ लॉज के बात करी और उस पे पेपर उन्होंने पढ़ा तो रॉयल सोसाइटी ऑफ लंदन में किया था और उस समय जाने माने जो नेचुरलिस्ट थे चार्ल डार्विन थे और जब उन्होंने वो थ्योरी दी कि जो लॉ ऑफ सेग्रीगेशन लॉ ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंट असॉटमेंट लॉ ऑफ ये आपकी डोमिनेंस तो उन्होंने कहा ये बेकार है क्योंकि चार्ल डार्विन उस समय बड़ा डोमिनेंट साइंटिस्ट थे तो उनकी थ्योरी को डिस्कार्ड कर दिया गया था 25 साल के बाद मरने के बाद में वही रिसर्च 1901 में कहा कि ये सच है तो आज टेक्नोलॉजी ने रिसर्च को बहुत आसान बना दिया है उसको एक्सेस करने में उसको ब्रॉडकास्ट करने में उसको डिसेमिनेशन करने में उसको कंडक्ट करने में थैंक यू 
sir there are few more questions sir one or two yes. sir uh, two interrelated question one yes. from uh, Payal Gupta and Manoj Kumar Sharma said uh, they they are just interested to know about the Bitcoin and Bitcoin in banking sector how it will. देखिए पायल जी और गुप्ता जी एक्चुअली क्या है कि जैसे हम इंटरनेट है इंटरनेट पे किसी का कंट्रोल नहीं है उस पे सर्विस सारी अवेलेबल है बट किसी का कोई कंट्रोल नहीं है इसी तरह से जो बिटकॉइन है एक करेंसी है और वो इलेक्ट्रॉनिक करेंसी है हाईली सिक्योर्ड है लेकिन अभी अगर वो बिटकॉइन आ जाएगी एक यूनिवर्सल करेंसी है वो ना डॉलर की कोई वैल्यू रहेगी ना इंडिया रूपी की वैल्यू रहेगी ना दिनार की रहेगी और वो कहीं ना कहीं मार्केटिंग में नॉट इन फॉर्मलाइज चैनल इनफॉर्मल वे से वो मार्केटिंग में चल रही है लेकिन उसको लीगलाइज अभी किसी कंट्री ने नहीं किया है लेकिन आज नहीं तो कल आप कॉमर्स के छात्र हैं आपको बहुत मतलब अध्यापक हैं तो आज नहीं तो कल ये जो बिटकॉइन जो करेंसी है जरूर हमारी जो करंट जो करेंसी है उसको इम्पैक्ट करेगा और उसको इफेक्ट करेगा और ये आने वाली फ्यूचर की करेंसी है और इसमें इतना इन्वेस्टमेंट लोगों ने बैकडोर से कर रखा है बट सिक्योर है और एक्सेसिबल है और पब्लिक को मिल पाए थैंक यू सर वन मोर क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम डॉक्टर मानिका जैन शी इज आवर कलीग फ्रॉम कॉमर्स डिपार्टमेंट शी इज आस्ट सर वेन वी टॉक अबाउट डिस्ट्रप्टिव टेक्नोलॉजीज वी लुक अप एट टू द डेवलप्ड कंट्रीज बट गिवन द इंडियन सिनारियो वेर अन इंटरप्टेड इंटरनेट इज स्टिल ए ड्रीम इन अ मेजर पार्ट ऑफ द कंट्री हाउ सक्सेसफुल वी विल बी इम्प्लीमेंट Will be the implementation of these technology here. देखिए मोनिका जी आपने बड़ा अच्छा प्रश्न किया है लेकिन मैं बहुत ही पॉजिटिव और आशावादी शिक्षक हूँ आशावादी छात्र रहा हूँ मैं हमेशा आशा करता हूँ कि आज आप देखिए कि आज से दस साल पहले इंटरनेट का क्या हाल इंडिया में था या कंप्यूटिंग इंडस्ट्री का क्या हाल था धीरे धीरे इंप्रूव हुआ आज अगर 80 और 90 परसेंट इंटरनेट कनेक्टिविटी हमारे इंडियन पीपल के पास पहुंच रही है और 20 परसेंट के पास नहीं पहुंच रही है तो 20 परसेंट की कॉस्ट पर हम 80 परसेंट को डिप्राइव नहीं कर सकते हाँ रिफॉर्म्स आ रहे हैं चेंजेज आ रहे हैं यस आप बिल्कुल सही है कि जितनी भी टेक्नोलॉजी है डेवलप कंट्री की टेक्नोलॉजी है बट क्या है कि धीरे धीरे इंप्रूवमेंट होगा और आज हम टू से थ्री जी या फोर की तरफ जा रहे हैं और 5G की भी तरफ जा रहे हैं तो मुझे उम्मीद और विश्वास है कि आने वाले समय में जो इंटरनेट कनेक्टिविटी है उसकी जो बैंडविथ है उसमें जरूर इंप्रूवमेंट होगा क्योंकि पहले उतना इंप्रूवमेंट नहीं था लेकिन आज बहुत इंप्रूवमेंट है और हमें आशावादी होना चाहिए कि आने वाले समय में भी बहुत इंप्रूवमेंट होगा और आज अगर ये इंप्रूवमेंट नहीं होता तो मैं समझता हूँ मोनिका जी आप और मैं आज जूम के थ्रू इंट्रेक्शन न कर रहे होते थैंक यू सर वन अनदर क्वेश्चन बाय डॉक्टर इंदू are the books and notebooks are totally replaced by kindle and computer uh my first answer is no the books is knowing books is not going to be replaced books aaj bhi sacred document hai ye alternate medium hai aapke jaise books ko aap carry nahi kar sakte ho aapne isko carry kar liya isme aap online dekh liya kisi ka text bhej diya वो उसको ये रिप्लेस नहीं होंगे हाँ फ्लक्चुएशन जरूर आएगा उसका जो रीडर कम हो हो सकते हैं क्योंकि यंगर जनरेशन आज करती है बट हमें ये भी ध्यान रखना है कि जितने भी इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मीडिया पर जो भी आपका कंटेंट है वो सिर्फ दस मिनट पंद्रह मिनट आधा घंटा दो घंटे मैक्सिमम एक घंटा आप पढ़ सकते हैं देख सकते हैं लेकिन उसके बाद में ज्यादा नहीं कर सकते आंखों में स्ट्रेस आना शुरू हो जाता है ईगोरोमी का आपने नाम सुना होगा उसके लिए हार्मफुल है लेकिन आप किताब को चाहे एक घंटा पढ़ें, दो घंटे पढ़ें, तीन घंटे पढ़ें, चार घंटे पढ़ें, पांच कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ने वाला इसलिए उसका कोई रिप्लेसमेंट नहीं है हाँ थोड़ा सा फ्लक्चुएशन आएगा कम बढ़ती आएगा और ये आगे पीछे होता रहता है थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर फॉर दिस एक्सलेंट लेक्चर एंड क्वेश्चन आंसर सेशन सर नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू इन्वाइट अवर कलीग डॉक्टर बलजीत कौर फॉर वोट ऑफ थैंक्स 
ओवर टीम जी जी नमस्कार नमस्कार सर थैंक यू सो मच सर थैंक यू विकास सर ऑनरेबल डॉक्टर के पी सिंह रिस्पेक्टेड प्रिंसिपल सर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कमेटी मेंबर्स एंड ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स इट्स माय प्रिविलेज टू हैव बीन आज टू प्रपोज अ वोट ऑफ थैंक्स ऑन दिस ओकेजन आई बलजीत कौर अलॉन्ग विद द इंटायर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग टीम हेडेड बाय डॉक्टर विनीता तूरी कन्वीनर ऑफ द वर्कशॉप एक्सटेंड अ वेरी हार्टी वोट ऑफ थैंक्स टू डॉट ऑनरेबल स्पीकर डॉक्टर के पी सिंह who blessed us with his presence and took out valuable time out of his busy schedule i must mention a deep sense of appreciation for dr singh for sharing his knowledge and his work in the area of technology and digitization of education sector he enlightened the participants about the disruptive technologies and its effects various contemporary technologies like iot bitcoins blockchain virtual reality and many more sir also introduced various free online education tools for effective teaching and learning sir aapne bahut achhi baat boli teaching is not a profession it's a passion no substitute of class teaching very nice sir uh, thank you sir for such an excellent session and i also wish to express my gratitude to our respected principal sir who has always been a guiding force behind all the successful events Dr. Vinita Tuli, our motivational factor; Dr. Anjali Gupta, co-convener, and all the team members. And a very big thanks to all the participants for being a part of this workshop. Have a good day. Thank you so much, sir. Thank, thank you, so thank you, one thank and all. So thank much. you very much. Thank you, thank you, Sabiko. Namaskar. Namaskar. Very, very, thank you, sir. Thank Yes, ma'am. It is okay. Ready to start. Yes. Ma'am, we may start now. Anupriya. Ravinder. Yes, sir. Nirmal Pari is there. Yes, sir. Please make Anupriya the host. She is not able to unmute herself. Ravinder, done, ma'am. Thank you. Anupriya, please start. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, sir. Sir, good morning. Good. Good. Good morning, honourable guest, respected principal sir, Dr. Vinita Tuli, program convener, Dr. Anjali Gupta, cope convener. all committee members and dear participants i anupriya arora welcome you all on the third day session 2 of three days online workshop titled the digital turn in education a new pattern in teaching learning practices organized by internal quality assurance cell of atmaram sanatan dharma college university of delhi on behalf of prst college i welcome our honorable speaker mr neeraj prasad irs 1993 batch and presently serving as Commissioner GST Investigation, Central Board of Indirect Taxes and Customs, Ministry of Finance, Government of India for today's session. Thank you so much, sir, for being sparing your valuable time for us, sir. We are really honoured to have you here. Now, I would like to invite our respected principal, sir, Dr. Gyantosh Kumar Jha, who is a guiding force behind all these successful events, to welcome our guest and say a few words of encouragement. Thank you, Anupriya. रेस्पेक्टेड नीरज प्रसाद जी डॉक्टर विनीता पुली कन्वीनर ऑफ दिस प्रोग्राम मेंबर्स ऑफ द ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कमेटी एंड ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ आत्मा राम सनातन धर्म कॉलेज आई वेलकम श्री नीरज प्रसाद जी इन दिस सेशन ऑफ दिस ऑनलाइन वर्कशॉप on the topic digital turn in education and new pattern in teaching learning practices sir it's a great pleasure and honor for me to have you here in this program and i am really grateful to you that you have 
given your valuable time for your lecture and uh, you are present here and really honored and obliged uh in fact in these days the days of pandemic and the days of lockdown we all have changed uh, in the teaching mode we are now teaching online and conducting our programs webinar and all the programs online so in this time uh, it is it is a it is a requirement of of time and hour and in this time your guidance and motivation and your lecture will be very beneficial and useful for all of us you are a great mentor speaker i know your abilities since my student days so once again i welcome you in this platform uh, from my college side from uh, my organizing committee team welcome you sir thank you for uh, giving us uh, your time and for your generosity thank you so much over to anupriya thank you sir mr neeraj prasad irs 1993 batch presently serving as commissioner gst investigation central board of indirect taxes and customs ministry of finance government of india it is a special mention here that sir has been appointed as first commissioner in this department set up by the government of india to deal with tax evasion sir has keen interest in the field of training and development and is a regular guest faculty and speaker at the national customs training academy iift icai ficci etc sir is also a recipient of president's distinguished service medal granted to irs officer sir i welcome you again and invite you to deliver your talk on emerging challenges for education sector in the present times of pandemic thank you sir thank you uh, am i visible and am i audible yes sir yes sir so uh, it was a very longish uh, <laughs> introduction and i'm not worthy of a uh, lot of things which has been said about me but uh, anyway uh, and i'm slightly intimidated also by being amongst uh, such uh, distinguished academics but nevertheless uh, i would like to share uh, my views and uh, what i have learned as an individual and what we have learned as an institution in cbic uh, about uh, remote learning training and so on and i am a keen observer uh, of uh, the developments happening in this space we all know that it's an unprecedented situation circumstances for which no institution was prepared uh, uh, not only educational institutions you talk about any institution my setup tax administration none of us we had a ready plan at hand to uh, work out a solution given the kind of uh, emergent circumstances which we faced so uh, we are still in the process of uh, framing the questions the right questions and in that process we have to look for answers and answers cannot be or would not be a one shot affair and uh, there is no quick or clever solution to the kind of problems uh, we are faced with we have to look at a collaborative approach we have to see what is happening across the globe how uh, other institutions within the same environment are handling uh, the problems at hand and uh, through this learning only we can uh, take baby steps or the initial steps in trying to uh, resolve the problem at hand covid is a health issue we just do not know whether the situation is going to aggravate or it's going to subside uh, to the satisfaction of uh, the general masses and population to the extent that it opens up the economy and opens up all human activity so we have to be prepared for a situation where the present circumstances would be a prolonged affair as we are all aware many uh, western universities for instance cambridge and all and uh, many ivy league universities also in us they have already taken a call 
that for the present year or for the present session and even beyond they would be uh, going completely online so uh, that's fine that template is there with us but we are bested or we are faced with our own kind of challenges so i have a short presentation at hand which is uh, more like a checklist it uh, throws up the questions and in some instances it also suggests a way forward and then within that framework we have to look for answers and proceed further we won't be having a 360 degree solution at all uh, in one go but the initial steps would be very crucial in trying to understand where we are headed to now uh, transitioning to online learning at a scale is a very difficult and highly complex undertaking for education systems even in the best of the circumstances we in the central board of excise and customs we handle specialized the, training sir yeah. uh, we share your uh, screen yeah please do share my screen and presentation with everyone so that they are also sir, it is visible uh, i think you are sharing your sir, please do then Ravinder, please. Sir, if you want, then I'll I'll share my screen. Uh, for that, I need to stop your sharing. Let me just do it. Should I stop for a moment? Sir, is it is it visible? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. So uh, I'll run it from here, and you just let me know when to move next. So we move to the next slide, please. this one yeah yes this. okay see transitioning to online learning at a scale is a very difficult and highly complex undertaking for education systems even in the best of the circumstances few education systems even the most high performing and well equipped one are uh, not able to offer online learning for all students at a scale and quickly which is required in the present circumstances now uh, this is our experience in a very specialized environment as well we handle very specialized training for our probationers and then uh, uh, continuing training uh, for in service officers whether central government or state government now we can't stop the training process but then to scale it up also is a huge challenge we uh, need to uh, uh, put in place certain kind of it infrastructure and solutions which is just not there or which was just not there and we have to ideate at a very furtive pace so while it infrastructure is certainly important much greater challenges relate to supporting teachers so that they can in turn support learners in a new learning environment offering high quality curriculum relevant digital learning content and assessment tools promoting the development of a variety of digital skills to enable students to be able to use technology effectively in support of the learning process implementing supportive data and information management system monitoring and evaluating what is happening and uh, how it impacts and uh, uh, the overall environment and then enacting the right enabling policies also so now this in a way sums up the whole circumstances which is there before us and we have to uh, look out for solutions within these uh, issues or within these circumstances which i have just highlighted so we move to the next slide please now one of the very key challenge here is moving to online learning at a scale raises profound equity concern all of us we have multiple roles i am a tax administrator at the same time i am a parent also so maybe in my case i am a privileged parent i may not be facing the kind of problems or my kids may not be facing the kind of problems which is there very widespread but then we can't be oblivious to the kind of challenges which is there when we shift to an online platform in practice the move to online learning at a scale typically disproportionately benefit student already advantaged in various ways rich over poor urban over rural high performing over low performing students and so on now uh, education institutions 
for example let's say uh, rsd college now uh, have we carried out this exercise to know how enabled the students are to receive uh, online learning imparting is a different issue altogether whether they are in a state of readiness the extent to which they are in a state of readiness to receive the online learning which is being planned off or which is thought of uh, being planned out or being rolled out to them now this kind of a database creation is very important to know or understand the kind of challenges uh, which would be faced when uh, online learning is uh, rolled out at a kind of scale which uh, we are envisaging Uh, especially when uh, the pandemic is uh, uh, there is no visible sign of the pandemic slowing down because offline mode is at the moment out of question or this is what the guideline says uh, the colleges and institutions the campuses would be opening up only when it is safe for everyone to go there and interact within uh, the issue of equity there is the need of uh, individual needs of students with disabilities and other special educational needs so are uh, is our planning or are our planning taking care of uh, the need of uh, this category of students who have uh, challenges in um, uh, in in uh, uh, challenges in accepting the kind of offering which will be made through the online platform now we have to answer these questions we just can't brush them aside and move ahead and forward uh, at all theek hai and this is a lot of it what i am saying is already known to most of the participants but then there is no harm uh, in reinforcing our thought process with the challenges which is there at the moment the next slide please we know and we we'll learn that most online learners will experience difficulties even the highly motivated learners especially those with previous experience in on online learning in fact these are the ones who would be able to take the advantage of online learning opportunity but then what is the percentage or the ratio of these highly motivated learners i'm very sure we all know that it is very less or very low the best students in offline learning mode tend to perform better than the peers in online learning environment as well and uh, the next slide please <clears throat> so uh, the whole uh, focus of uh, online learning uh, cannot be in a manner that it only enables the resource rich uh, the ones who are in a position to receive uh, the learning or to take advantage of the learning and it has to focus on those who are facing challenges of every kind in terms of accessibility in terms of special needs in terms of grasping ability as well the key issue here is again then we move to the next key issue that is learning content and application now providing a consolidated one stop shop for access to online learning opportunity is strongly advised this is something which uh, i have borrowed from a lot of readings which i have done about best practices which is happening all across in our case also uh, there is a central learning portal through which all offerings are made a central online portal can provide a consolidated listing of all available content tools applications and platform together with supporting material and guidance for student teachers and parents now whether it is to be created at the institution level or at the university level these are the kind of policy calls which will be taken by different uh, kind of institutions as they are placed as it is said more capable or advanced education system can go one step further and provides single sign access to a set of online learning opportunities tools platforms and content in order to simplify the related user experience this can also help the education system monitor usage and provide insight into what might be going right or wrong now this is a step more advanced than just offering uh, the content through an online portal this is 
rather going towards a very interactive process and it will have its own technical technological and pedagogical challenges the next slide please creating an inventory of existing learning content ready to be deployed via remote learning is necessary as well as a plan on how to make it available along with additional content a quick inventory of content that can easily be made available is the first order of business such content may come from multiple sources many gaps should be expected as well as potential uh, duplication now here lies a challenge also in this era of uh, google and uh, freely available resources and uh, on a particular topic or on a particular uh, issue there would be multiple resources which is available now how uh, it is to be collated and how it is to be offered is also something which will require a very clear insight so that it does not lead to uh, unintended consequences or it does not lead to the kind of uh, goal uh, which was never planned for rather it has to be in sync with whatever is the learning objective <clears throat> now within this also there would be challenges in terms of uh, languages in which the resource is available in some subjects the languages uh, uh, the content would be available in multiple languages in some subjects uh, it may not be required but then the content itself may not be available so uh, there would be a need for uh, translating the educational resources as well all of it these steps cannot be handled on a stand alone basis in very many instances this is also an acceptable fact but then an institutional solution would be required because uh, these are the kind of questions which just cannot be left hanging in air for instance there are many uh, many educational publishers who have existing content and uh, which is not there in widespread use maybe there would be free content maybe it would be paid content but again we can have an understanding with them uh, if we can co-opt their uh, educational resources into our offering to the students in our case we have done so we have very specialized uh, tax publication like lexis nexis butterworks and so on wherein they offer uh, free resources also and with the, wherein they offer uh, paid resources also so we have entered into an agreement with them so that we are able to offer their content to our user group the next slide please as i mentioned organizing this digital education content to align with existing curricula can be a critical can be critical in providing users and teachers with a way to ensure that learning opportunities provided correspond to the broader educational objectives within an education system simply pointing students and teachers to a large online repository with potentially useful while potentially useful i'm sorry is not is not enough as i pointed out something more needs to be done we need to organize the existing learning content so that learners and teachers can understand what content is available and then and in the sequence in which it should be used in line with the existing curricula the next slide please now uh how is the content to be made uh, available in the previous slides i pointed out accessibility to the content or the to the learning offering itself is going to be a huge challenge now devices is not that freely and easily available devices in terms of laptop or in terms of desktop through which we are taking part in this interactive process may not be that widespread and this uh, hypothesis would easily get confirmed once a detailed survey is done what is the kind of accessibility the students have but we know for one thing for sure that mobile is lot more ubiquitous ubiquitous than uh, computing devices so are we offering the content in a mobile friendly manner this is again a question which is to be answered and it has to be taken forward 
the next slide please then the technical uh, technological challenges in supporting use of low bandwidth we have to go in for uh, video offerings as well in terms of podcast in terms of youtube uh, recorded lectures users they need to be able to easily understand how to access and use it so besides the centralized platform or uh, the standardized platform there has to be a teacher peer support group also through which uh guidance can be offered to the students that this is how uh they can access and this is how they can use i'm very sure a lot, lot of it would be being done even now but what i'm trying to say is that we have to do it in a structured manner whoever of us is involved in training imparting uh, education at various levels or in various kind of institutions we are all aware uh, of uh, these circumstances and many of these measures are already being taken but it has to be done in a structured manner by ensuring that uh, our focus is not disproportionate towards a particular issue and in uh, in the whole uh, process we are ignoring certain key aspects as well now help desk creation a virtual help desk creation should also be considered to make the online uh, learning offering a more meaningful exercise because I, as i keep on saying and i'm repeating again and again in this presentation is that the whole ecosystem is going to be extremely challenging for the one who is imparting the lessons and for the one who is going or who is supposed to receive it so we we will need a, a enabling environment in very many ways informal support groups help desk centralized portals next level of interaction through student access of the centralized portal and so on the next slide please here again we clearly know that there are some academic subjects which are easier to move online than others how uh, the learning gap in let's say physical sciences would be met again is a question which needs to be answered there are many subjects where there are lot of online resources available but then there are subjects where online resources are very limited so here comes the question of content creation also which again has to be a structured affair now we can't at our uh, institutional level uh, i'm talking about uh, colleges and so on we can't leave the answers to all these questions to uh our uh, central formation let's say the university or let's say ugc and so on these are my thoughts uh, the participants may agree or may not agree we need to ideate and we need to find solution within the available resources of our institution as well of course it has to be done within the parameters of the guidelines which has been laid down by the regulatory bodies and uh, by um, the superior administrative formations but then let's say this particular issue every and all what subjects are virtually taught in colleges not every subject is amenable to online learning so how are we going to meet the challenge of that part which cannot be easily dealt with online or how are we going to meet the challenge of that subject where content itself is very scanty or just not available or up to the mark we need an action plan for that also then much of what happens in schools cannot be easily transformed online by schools i mean institutions <coughs> the instructional approach content pacing interaction model and assessment may all need to be adopted so we need answers for all of that i was running through the kind of topics uh, which is to be dealt with other than my talk which is basically on the most uh, fundamental of the issues most of the topics by other learned guests are on um, very specialized aspects of online learning for example there is a particular talk maybe today itself on uh, the assessment challenges then uh, there is a talk on um, how artificial intelligence uh, can be used now uh, for the purpose of online uh, learning and education 
तो माय सबमिशन हियर इज दैट कि वी नीड टू इम्बाइब ऑल दी स्पेशलाइज लर्निंग विद इन द फ्रेमवर्क विच आई एम सजेस्टिंग प्रॉब्ली सम ऑफ इट वुड सम ऑफ द की इशू ऑफ द फ्रेमवर्क माइट नॉट बी हाईलाइटेड हियर और माइट बी मिस्ड हियर but all i am trying to say is that ki we need a checklist approach to move forward by trying to answer all the questions which comes in the way the next slide please now clearly online education is not a substitute to campuses uh, because uh, education is not just about uh, learning uh, the academic content which is being offered uh, it is much more than that it is about socialization it is about access to counseling it is about health services and so on so here also we need to ideate that what all can be shifted to the online platform not everything can be shifted and not all experience can also be shifted it is just not possible but then yes uh, Uh, there are certain aspects, even uh, for the COVID treatment and all telemedicine or tele consultation has been put in place. So, if we have to go in that direction, let's say if it was a functional campus, all these additional resources were available to the students: counseling, health services, placement services, and so on. So, what all can possibly shifted ideation needs to happen here also. the next slide please student assessment is going to be a huge challenge i'll not dwell on it much because there is a very specialized session on this particular aspect now uh, there is no perfect solution okay in many instances students are being promoted uh, without assessment maybe that is the right call in the given circumstances but uh, in many situations assessment would be mandatory or would be a must and it would have its own challenges so the more we dwell on it the more we think about it the more we will come up with solutions they might be suboptimal they might not be perfect but it will give us some way forward that this is how we need to proceed further the next slide please in this whole process we also need to remember that the kind of challenge which the students will face teachers are also going to face equally we know for sure that there are very few teachers who are easily able to transit to online learning environment giving a one off talk like what i am doing for 15 minutes 20 minutes and doing it on a regular basis in a, on a structured basis pacing it also monitoring uh, the progress of the students and so on and so forth is a huge uh, challenge huge challenge a huge technical challenge and a huge skill uh, challenge as well so uh, the training needs and requirement of the teachers also need to be instructors i would say need to be also mapped out and um, uh, a, a way forward on an action plan has to be um, put in place for that as well many of the challenges which uh, the students would have in terms of accessibility even teachers are going to have so uh, the challenges of the teachers or the instructors are very unique very typical and it just cannot be a kind of a scenario where we say that okay fine this is a subject this is the course this is the online content and you please go ahead and start doing so okay fine they'll go ahead and start doing but then there will they'll falter for sure because uh, uh, we have not uh, anticipated many of the challenges which would come we learn many thing by doing that is also there but then we need a very structured uh, teachers training program also a process through which they can smoothly onboard to the online uh, teaching platform the next slide please now this is a very peculiar slide which i have uh, included here and this is something which i was reading in the best practices of uh, other institutions 
typically there are a lot of uh, ed tech competent staff also now this is in context to the core team which the institutions would be creating to handle the challenges the emergent challenges which has arisen out of covid now these ed tech competent staff need not essentially be having the formal role uh, for uh, uh, holding uh, the responsibility for coming up with the solutions in terms of uh, various issues which i have uh, panned out because maybe the existing bureaucratic processes may not be allowing them to have a more uh, formal or a more active role but then uh, they are a huge plus to the team and if such resources are available they need to be co-opted in the planning process so that uh, they are uh, able to guide the team also with the kind of insight they have and they are able to contribute also to tell the team that okay this is the route to be taken and this is the route to be avoided and so on the next slide please now in every discourse we are talking on zoom we all know that zoom is not the favored platform at least in government we don't use zoom we use a nic developed platform which is safe and secure so if uh, it has to be done on a prolonged and on a repetitive basis zoom is uh, for instance there would be other uh, platforms also having similar challenges zoom is not the preferred platform because it has a lot of privacy related issues and um, and uh, as we know it is uh, a chinese entity so uh, on a online offering um, where a lot of details of the students of the instructors institution etc is available privacy is a key concern and, uh, when we are also using third party resources through the centralized portal now um, taking care of uh, student safety in terms of uh, very many other factors also which i don't want to dwell upon here uh, but then uh, it is very clear and obvious that also has to be taken care of so uh, within this i need to say that uh, when we are looking for technological solutions we need to explore other platforms also even sap has a platform for educational purposes cisco has one uh, in my very last slide i would be mentioning the kind of resources which the core team of every institution should monitor to Uh, garner more and more ideas of how to take things forward uh, in one of the oecd documents i saw a list of very many other web tools which is available and which are ideally suited for uh, large scale online uh, educational offering the next slide please so these are the external resources which i was uh, mentioning there are others also but then uh, the edtech platform which is handled by the world bank and which is a collaborative effort of world bank dfid and gates foundation they uh, come up with a continuous stream of ideas of the edtech challenges that are being faced what are the possible solutions what is working uh, and what is not working what has been the uh, student community experience what ha what has been the uh, teaching community experience and so on and similarly oecd uh, organization of economic cooperation and development which is a group of uh, or which is a multilateral institutions of essentially rich countries uh, the oecd resources are also very useful they also have a covid specific, specific uh, education portal where they are continuously updating and coming up with uh, guidance notes and so on uh, a checklist and so on about what needs to be done next given the kind of peculiar challenge the institutions are facing so this was my last slide and this was in brief my talk and uh, uh, i have dealt with the very basics and we need to answer uh, we need to answer the very basic and then only we can move forward in a holistic manner so i hope uh, my talk was useful and uh, thank you very much thank you sir
for sharing your knowledge and enlightening us about the challenges which we are facing in education sector during this pandemic and solutions to overcome some of them so now we are going to take some questions yeah please uh, i'm open to that yes so one question is from uh, my side only so how to deal with the security issues if organization has financial constraints like you were talking about in one of the slides no uh, uh, um, in one of my slides or probably i missed on that slide we uh, we need to co-op the ed tech companies or uh, entities also in the whole process uh, when i mention ed tech company i have in mind companies like uh, Uh, Corsia, which is a MNC, but then uh, you have Indian entities also like Upgrad, and um, at a mass level you have uh, institutions like Byju's and uh, other setups also. Now they need not be sidestep, or they need not be ignored, or they need not be treated as merely commercial ed tech shops. Like Byju's is in, is completely in the coaching space. civil services and so on but then they are doing it at a very mass level at a very mass scale upgrade is offering specialized uh, courses uh, of uh, foreign universities in any universities of the kind uh, of data mining machine learning artificial intelligence and so on so they have built up a huge repository of experience and that takes into account the student uh, safety and security also in terms of uh, the online uh, user experience so having a formal informal interactive process with them or co-opting them in our discussions they won't mind that also because in a way the whole uh, scenario is creating tremendous opportunities opportunities for the edtech uh, companies so they won't uh, from my experience i know they won't mind sharing their experience which can be woven within our solution framework this is one way of going ahead and i mentioned uh, the edtech resource or the oecd resource these are just some examples there are many other examples also for example uh, while i was researching for this talk i came across a huge checklist of a uh, online university washington western university which is a completely online university which always was an online university and how the whole uh, online uh, experience is to be imparted to the students co-opting within their uh, framework uh, the covid specific peculiarities as well <clears throat> thank you sir uh, very nicely explained sir the so next question is from one of our colleague dilip kumar gupta on one side online education promotes learning from anywhere any time but on the other side digital divide is a big issue what do you think sir now i pointed out that equity is going to be a huge concern but let's say our campuses they don't open up because uh, health is the primary concern if the pandemic speeds up the um, infection becomes a lot more widespread there is community spread and so on so government will certainly be taking more and more conservative steps they can't uh, they can't they can't just uh, put or uh, endanger the life of the students or uh, the teaching community because as our prime minister also said jaane to jahan hai wali baat aa jati hai so but then uh, there are solutions to it like uh, uh, one particular uh, i can straight away mail of mail that document also different kind of uh, tools are to be put in place you know what is happening in uh, if we are not talking specifically about uh, a university or college now we know africa covid is raging everywhere so they are using platforms such as uh, fm transmission also they are using platforms such as uh, mm, Uh, lo- uh, um, uh, as i said the uh, radio fm transmission they are using platforms such as pre recorded uh, videos uh, which can be uh, broadcast through community network and so on so 
where there is a will there is a way those students those who can't easily access good then a lot of news items about students going in distress just because they did not have a smart device with them that problem can be also overcome but for before that we need to know within our setup the extent of the problem if we know the extent of the problem then we'll start working on the kind of solution also which uh, can be made available to them in some countries hello yeah hello yes sir so uh, uh, we we have to educate ourselves in the whole process so we have to keep on learning new things of how these are not peculiar problems to us only these are the kind of problems which is being faced by different countries and different societies all of them they are coming up with some or other kind of ideation some or other kind of solution all we need to do is to learn about them and uh, think how we can co-opt uh, that particular solution within our environment because if the learning has to be offered online it has to be offered online it uh, uh, it will go on but then we have to find answers to these uh, problems as well uh we have a uh, dr kapil kapil kumar a uh, visually challenged participant with us i think he is going to ask something uh kapil can you unmute yourself dr kapil i'm audible sir yeah yeah okay good morning sir good morning first of all thanks a lot for such an enriching lecture sir actually as you mentioned that technology has proved has emerged as an enabler for disabled persons or children with special needs or students with special needs it is a fact that technology has proven to be very fruitful for us but basically the hindrances which we face in today's world also means when it comes to accessibility there is web content accessibility guidelines which were issued globally on in uh, 2012 but still we face a lot of barriers like some of the contents which are put up on internet they are in image format which is not accessible for us and sometimes we face issues of captcha while visiting or while uh, entering or accessing any site now how to solve and how to resolve these issues basically now what to do with it because it makes our learning very very tough yeah i am very glad that you raised this issue and uh, you have raised this issue amongst the platform of education administrators this is something which we need to be very cautious about and very concerned about Uh, most of our websites even the present one i don't know how um, uh, friendly they are uh, to people with special needs and the guidelines which you are mentioning it needs to be a mandatory part of each and every offering uh, which we would be making and these kind of issues of capture uh, of uh, the content itself not being accessible uh, to uh, to people with special need is uh, is an unacceptable uh, situation if you look at the websites of advanced countries and i'm talking about in my specific context tax administration and all they clearly certify their websites to be uh, friendly towards people having special needs now are we taking such care if we are not taking we have to take care as i said in our rush to roll out the online offering and all that we can't ignore these aspects and these are the finer aspects which will address the issue of equity and accessibility to the whole spectrum of students and thank you very much for raising this issue and the planning team of the institution they have to take care of it it is just not about the content being there it is about how the content is being offered also thank you thanks a lot sir the next question from dr indu sir please tell me the name nic develop tool which we can use in online teaching Sir, can I repeat the question, sir? Ah, uh, it's a question by Dr. Indu. 
सर प्लीज टेल दी नेम ऑफ एन आई सी टू डेवलप विच वी कैन यूज इन ऑनलाइन टीचिंग now uh, uh, if i can answer because i am also seeing uh, some of the com comments and those comments are very much uh, the kind of issues which are flagged off and i have another request to principal sri jyanto jha ji that um, uh, fine uh, let this be uh, the beginning of an interaction okay matlab like uh, you have asked about the nlp tool which we are using now in uh, uh, a mail which i would be sending to principal sri gantosh jha ji i'll be mentioning those details i'll also be curating a list of other web, web tools which are available and uh, those are not my suggestions those are suggestions of oecd but in the indian context as i said we have a safe, safe and secure platform which has been created by nic so that can be used or that can be tweaked or that can be modified or uh, uh, online education offering for so that interaction with nic would be required thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir next uh, sir next question is from uh, delhi uh, again ashok kumar pandey please tell me which platform is safe for online teaching no i was answering that question only in my previous response uh, as i said the nic tool which we use for uh, offering our uh, online uh, courses to our participants the irs probationers the in service participants and all that i'll be uh, giving the details or a short note of that tool to principal sri jantosh sir and he can in turn uh, pass it on to the participants he can in turn even interact with the nic people that how that platform can be used or suitably modified for the purposes of college education or university education as well i'm very sure nic would be working in that direction as well. and plus there are other tools as well i'll be giving a curated list of sure sir so i request you uh, since uh, um, i have uh, some other preoccupation so if it could be one last question or two last question then we can wind up please i will be taking a last question now so the question is from uh, bhavatosh bhaskar does online teaching system not increase the gap between haves and not haves and not haves that is the challenge we have to address and uh, uh, it can be addressed it's not a impossibility it's a question of uh, having the right road map before us and proceeding on that road map so as i keep uh, as i'm repeating continuously that if campuses they don't open up then what are we going to do all of us we are education uh, educationists but we are parents as well we have the children uh, whose educational needs have to be met and as i said maybe the audience would be a privileged lot but there would be a lot of people who are not privileged so their educational uh, the needs of their children and their educational needs they cannot be ignored a solution has to be found and there are solutions which are being used and in many instances they are working also so whatever Uh, the uh, very last slide of mine which uh, is uh, just mentioning the edtech and oecd resource i encourage everyone those who are interested in this field to keep on regularly visiting it to subscribe to their newsletters and all because a lot of very relevant stuff uh, would be coming your way which will be enlightening you and which will also be um, uh, exploring solutions and would will help you ideate Uh, for the kind of circumstances in which you are thank you thank you so much sir now i would like to invite uh, ma'am vinita ma'am for official word of thanks thank you sir thank you thank you sir for the valuable time you have given us despite your busy schedule sir your talk on the topic on emerging challenges for the education sector in the present times of the pandemic was very informative insightful and relevant in the times of the covid pandemic sir you are right in saying that online teaching poses plethora of challenges 
you talked about remote learning and online learning and various challenges which are there related to infrastructure for making this digital turn feasible in our country. You also talked about various concerns like faculties and students experience during this pandemic period. Thank you, sir, once again. I would also like to thank the principal of our college, Dr. Gyantosh Kumar Jha, under whose able guidance we were able to organize this three-day online workshop. I would like to thank all my committee members, my team members. Without their support, nothing would have been possible. Thank you, sir, for your valuable time. Thank you, and it was a great privilege to interact, and um, uh, I'm very happy that I was here and I was able to share my ideas. Thank you very much. And whatever uh, learning we have uh, as an institution with respect to um, uh, online imparting of training and all, I'll be passing it on to Gyantosh Jhaji. And let this be a continuous process, and it has to be a continuous process because it, there cannot be any full stop in this process. We have to look for solutions. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.